I carved two really tiny blocks. Let me show you how. I've got the two small drawing, the two small little pieces that I want to carve out, drawn out onto my Baltic birch plywood, and I'm just gonna work on carving these little guys out. Um, I want to keep these real simple. I kept them together on the same piece of wood because it it's easier for me to hold sometimes one big piece of wood rather than a little piece of wood. Just gonna put a exacto mark there. So when I carve up into that point, it just it falls off basically, so it doesn't have the opportunity to tear that line. I had a feeling that was gonna be a problem. There's a knot right there. I don't get many knots in this wood. But oh well, it'll be okay. it's okay. it's okay. It just takes a little bit a little bit more of an effort to to carve through it, but it's gonna be fine. The name of the game here is just slow and steady. Follow my lines. I want to thin out the top of this carving mark. Well, that's weird. There's like a, the layer of wood underneath the top layer is like a different color. That's odd. It means nothing in the grand scheme of things. It's just different. Okay. So I'm going to put a little, little exacto mark there so I don't rip that line. When I'm doing small detailed carvings, Exacto marks can be very helpful. Just to just basically tells my tool where to stop, and it doesn't allow things to go past that that mark. I'll do the same thing here on the outside, and I'm going to come inwards up to that mark, and then I'm going to do it again for the the white of the eye. I'm going to just curve it and then push down. And I don't think I'm going to carve the whites of these eyes out, or the um, the highlight on the pupil, so to say, because these are just very fine. I drew them in the sketch wondering if I would be able to get that detailed. And maybe I will at the end, but as it stands right now, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that mark. Now wood car is very interesting um, because wood has grain. So when you go with the grain, the wood peels. My grain is running this way. So every time I go this way, the wood peels up. Get an exacto. Go along that line. And every time I go against the grain, it kind of chips. You can see it even sounds different. All right, once again, I'm going to go to the bottom of the eye there. All right, so I'm going with the grain this time. It's gonna peel up quite easily. So I don't want it to peel past this point. So I'm just gonna make a mark with my X-Acto knife. And he's got this little knob on his fore on the top of his head there. So I'm gonna grab my small U gouge and I'm just gonna go to the exacto mark that I made. Okay. So I've already carved a score mark uh, on this side, the edge of the face. So I'm just gonna carve up to that score mark. 
and clear out everything in the face area. Why is it such a different color underneath? This is atypical for this birch. I wonder if it's just in this area too, because, oh, huh. I'm gonna zoom in. Maybe you can see a little better. Um, but I just, I just got a little carving mark that looks like a nostril. I'm gonna sharpen it up a little bit. And I'm gonna keep it there. Because it kind of happened in the perfect little spot. Here's the knot in the wood again. I've always likened uh, wood carving to uh, working in Illustrator. Because in Illustrator, when you're drawing your lines, you're defining the outsides of your shapes. And when you're carving, you're kind of doing the same thing. You're just working around and defining your outside shapes, the outside marks of your shapes. I'm going to take my X-Acto blade and score it there, just so I can come against it with my small little U-gouge. And then I'm just going to carve this front line of the neck. And I'm going to use my X-Acto knife once again to score. And I'm going to come up against that. And then I'm going to score that whole front line so it doesn't peel up any further than I want it to. Great. All right, so I almost had a little bit of a unfortunate tear there. So I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife once again. And just cut up against the front of that leg. Okay, so now I've just got the little toenails to carve out. Um, just to think how to do those. You can see how small I'm working. Um, all right, I'm gonna do just little curved lines and then I'm gonna exacto those out. All right, so I'm just gonna go inside those lines with an exacto mark. And then I'm going to come down on the outside with one, two. Uh oh. Then I'm going to use my little U gouge to pop those out. And then I'm just going to go back in this other way in thin lines. And by when I say thin lines, what I mean is just make the lines that are defining these the negative spaces I'm carving out thinner. That looks pretty good. All right, now I'm gonna work on the undershell.
back to working on the undershell and I'll get those toes. Let me go ahead and just cut with my X-Actor knife. This is gonna be fragile. I anticipate I'm gonna lose something. So I am going to, um, let's see. Yeah, maybe it's not loose. All right. Wish me luck. Woohoo! It didn't pop up, so I was I was expecting that little line to pop up. We lost a little bit of it just now with my exacto knife, but it's not it's not a part, so I'm not going to worry about it. It's fine. Um. You gouge and just pop up to the line. This one I think goes this way. I'm gonna cut a little bit further down right here. So I can just grow this bottom toe. Sweet. All right. The bulk of the turtle's body is completed. I want a, I want a clean line right there. So I'm just gonna cut down there. And then the leaves. And now the petals of the flower. One more petal to go. And now for the inside of the, what's that called? Like the, the pollen area. I'm not a flower expert. I got three blades of grass right here that I would like to carve out. And then before I carve out the spirals, I'm going to uh, carve out the outside of the turtle, of just around the turtle, so I know what it looks like currently. Because the outside, the, uh, the spiral is going to be... Um, a white line carving. What I've been doing so far is a black line carving. Um, the difference is it's very it's it's exactly what it sounds like. When you're doing a black line carving, you're designing your block so that the black what is left is the line work, um, and that's what's defining. So the black ink is the positive space. With a white line carving, it's when you carve away line work so that the negative space is black and the positive and the positive space is white. So so far this is a 90% black line drawing and we're going to be turning it into a um, 90 yeah, black line drawing. And then the inside is going to be a white line area. And I like to mix up the two techniques in my prints. Um, it doesn't happen in every print, but I do like to find opportunities to, to do it in, in some prints that I do, in most prints that I do. I like to have that variety in technique in my work.
This is also very delicate work too, and you want to make sure that your tool is as sharp as possible. So while you're working at times, it's important to just use a little leather honing uh, block to hone the outside of your tool edge. That's just a little bit better. Go up to this with the X-Acto knife, so I got kind of a clean corner there. And then I've got these little marks around the tail, like he's wagging his little tail. So I want to be mindful of those as I'm carving. And there's that side. around the lines in the underbelly. Be careful not to peel. Clean up this, these edges that I just carved. They're kind of jagged. I really don't understand why it's so different on the inside. Maybe I didn't grab birch, but I'm pretty sure this is birch because it's carving just like all my other pieces. And birch is the, you know, some of the nicest wood that I've, I've carved on. I think I would know a difference between birch and not birch at this point. And this just certainly feels like birch. It's so odd. You can't really see it, it, but it's just very red in there. All right, so I'm going to use my small U gouge to just clear this out. And I'm where I can, I'm just going to try to carve away from the piece so it doesn't peel up on me. You can, now that I'm kind of carving in large areas, you can see how it's peeling. But if you just go slow with a sharp tool, it's not a big problem. Yeah, do you see how different co that color is? It's red. It's very strange. All right. So I'm going to use my X-Acto blade to draw a line there so I can carve up to this foot <coughs> and not worry about it peeling away on me. Same thing here. I'm just going to take my blade and cut down so it doesn't peel again. I'm just going to make a mark here in the middle of the two, two pieces so I don't actually accidentally carve away stuff that's important to the panda too. If I did, I would just redraw it. It wouldn't be a big deal. But, you know, if I don't have to, I don't want to. And I'm going to separate these later. I'm not going to keep them combined as... as uh, one whole block. I will cut them apart uh, with my scroll saw at some point. But like I said, it's just easier to carve a block if I can get a hold of it. And the bigger the block, the better. So I'm using that to help me in this process. All 
Let me go down a little, just go all the way down here. Sweet. I'm just going to use my, uh, my flat chisel to go along this line here. Just flatten this whole area out. Same with along the edge of the neck there, so I can pop out these little chatter marks that will print, even though they're lower than everything. Those will collect ink. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do that along the whole edge of it, but once I'm done with the whole piece, including the panda, including the panda. But for now. I'm, just, I'm gonna start carving out the spirals on the turtle shell. I'm gonna add one little, like the end of the spiral in there, even though it's not drawn. But I want it to go flat up against that line. Same here. Just gonna put a little mark there. And a little mark there, because that's where my, my white lines are going up to. And see, when you do that, it gives you a really nice flat edge rather than the tapered line. It just gives you a different look. So it looks like it's sitting underneath that mark. I'm going to do the same thing against this uh, blade of grass. A little mark in there to imply that there is a spiral up there as well. He looks very messy because of all the colors underneath of him, but he's he should print pretty good. Yeah, but the the different color wood underneath makes him look very messy. So I'm finished with the turtle. Um, I'll move on to the panda shortly. Take a slight break. The turtle's all carved out. Now I gotta move to the panda bear, and. I'm going to sharpen my tools a little bit, or hone them, not sharpen them. This one's going to be a little bit simpler to carve out than the turtle one. The turtle had a lot of overlapping spots. But before I go any further, I, I should go and get these eyes out. Because that is one of the more complicated areas. And I don't want to mess, mess them up by carving away too much in the future, or not in the future, before I even get to them. Where did I just cut? I forgot. Right there, I see it? Okay. So I'm gonna go around, curve, and then I am gonna, this one I absolutely need to carve the pupil. So I'm, I'm I need just a, the smallest little nick out of there. So I'm basically using half of this little mini U gouge. And the reason I carved that first is so that I could control this line that I just carved so I didn't carve away too much. I knew exactly where I needed to go to. The way this is carving, this is definitely birch. It's just a weird redness underneath. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this piece. It, like it carves all the same, it just looks different underneath, which isn't a big deal, except for the appearance of it. Um, but it's gonna print the same, and it's carving the same. It just has a just a redness underneath of it.
All right, so I have this side of the nose. It's as basically his, his upper lip area on the back side of his nose. So this is a risky thing. I believe that that is too pointy. So I'm going to cut with my X-Acto knife so I don't get too much. I'm just going to try to round this off. There we go. I'm going to do a little bit here too. There we go. It's just a little bit too pointy. Now it's, now it's, remember I was talking about when I was drawing them. Um, I will, it's gonna be two separate videos, but I did a, a sketchbook video of both of these guys, and I will link those in the description below. But uh, I was talking about how the, the panda's in front of his face, like his snout was very square. All right, so this is also gonna be very tricky too. I'm gonna to sharpen my tool. Um, now I gotta do the, the ear, but remember it's black. So I'm just gonna do little nicks. Oh, it wants to peel so bad. That's why I just go slow and steady. I just wanna open these up slightly more. Same with the ones on this ear. All right, so this little area is black. So I'm not gonna carve that out. It's gonna be treated the same way as the ears. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna move to this back area now. I really like those. I'm gonna, this is connected though, so I don't want that to be connected. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to give um, that the same sort of jagged treatment. But before I go and do that, I'm gonna go and do what I did to the ear. And there, do my, my white line carving. All right, so now I'm just gonna outline that basically, those marks that I just made. So all this in the middle here is going to be clear, cleared out. So what I'm doing is I'm the edges, the rim of the inside of this area, I'm just lowering it down. And then as always, I'm going to take my X-Acto blade and go up to the edges where it's going to get cut to. And this is just so it doesn't peel. And I won't use that at first. I'm going to use the little one to because it still can peel. I'm going to use a little one to minimize the amount that it might peel. And just carve it away. And then I'm going to use the, the, the flat piece, the flat gouge. I'm sure there's a different name for this. Just to just to take out all the noise in here so it doesn't print. Because I don't want this printing on these small ones. I just don't. 
I, I like to have be in control of my block. Sometimes I will intend to keep some noise in there, um, but I want 100% control over that noise. <laughs> All right, so we're 90% done with this bear already. All I have to do now is do the little little white line carving, the little tick marks, because the arms, the legs are all black. So I'm just going to, you know, carve, just do little, little fur marks on the front edge and a little bit on the back end of that. And then same here. And then here as well. Ooh, this is gonna be tricky. Just go for it. Get like the, the little thumb part of his paw. Okay. And then the same thing for this other front paw. And then the back paws. And this panda is done. I just gotta take out the outsides of it now. So here we go. I like how this panda is very different. It's just a very black and white and very simple carving. Um, when I'm drawing them, it is very difficult to plan for things like this. For It's very difficult to plan how it's gonna carve and how it's gonna look. Um, but that's why they look very simple because I was planning them to draw so small, to carve so small. And when I carve, I'm very limited with what I can do because of the size of my uh, the carving tool, you know, is about yay big. Um, and it can only make marks so small, but like with, you know, like with a pencil or a uh, pen, you can make very, very, very tiny marks and make very, very detailed small little drawings. Woodcuts, um, woodcuts specifically, you're, you are limited by the size of your tool. There's different types of like wood engravings you can do a lot of very, very fine detail, but I'm not, uh, I don't do wood engravings. My brain just doesn't work that way. I have, I've, you know, I've done them in the past to varying degrees of success. Um, but I, I much prefer this kind of, uh, this way of working with the, uh, wood engravings, they're done with something called gravers which is just different than a, uh, a carving tool. It is a carving tool. It's different than a chisel or a gouge, which is what these are called actually. Gouges, not chisels. Um, the gravers basically scratch the wood. They carve it up, but it's just, it's a different way of doing it. It's just very, it's very different. And I, I like the feel better of a gouge rather than the gravers. Maybe at some point I'll try a wood engraving again to work small like this. But for now, I much, I much prefer this method of wood carving. I also like how I'm answering questions no one's asking. I'm just kind of talking into space.
All right, so there's two very delicate areas in here. I've got in here, let me use this to point this area um, in between the two front paws that I have to remove. And just so it doesn't peel up in this direction. And then the back paws. And then real quick, I'm just going to take the small gouge and, and carve away all of this excess that's sitting in here and call it a day. So thank you for uh, sitting with me and carving with me today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, you know, let me know. I do have a page on my website that answers a bulk of the questions I typically get. I have a frequently asked questions page, and I also have a what do you use page, which links to uh, supplies and stuff that I often use. And I will link both of those down in the description below. But if you, if you have any questions that those don't answer, feel free to ask and I will do my best to answer them. So thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, do all those fun things, and I will see you guys later. Thank you.